right? But on the way to the cross, he went to the whipping post. You know, the whipping post. Amen? He was beaten. He was smitten. There was no form, no coming to this. Any man could desire him. And that by his stripes you're healed. Amen? I were healed. I was healed. And I is healed. Amen. No matter what the circumstances. No matter what the doctors tell me. Amen? And on the way, he went to the cross. There he, again, shed his blood. Amen? Amen? The blood. The blood of Jesus. Here you are saying about the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Amen? God is so good. So good. Amen? You've got to we walk by grace. By faith, not by works that any man can boast. It's done. The last three words that Jesus spoke, it's finished. It's finished. Sometimes pain will come to my body. I have to sit down. But by the name of Jesus Christ, I were healed. Amen. Sometimes symptoms will come. Amen. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I watched my words. Galatians chapter 3, 13, 4 says, says that, that we are redeemed from the curse. The curse of the law. Amen. We're redeemed from the curse of the law. And it's up to us whether we, we, we can choose life or death. And God says, choose life. Choose life. So we have that choice. We have the authority. We have the power in the name of Jesus Christ to do decree, decree a thing the Word of God said. And it is established. Amen. God is good all the time. I didn't say sometimes. I said all the time. God is good. Yes, sir. Your stomach is all messed up. <laughs> I remember saying that, and I did. I had stomach problems for years, years. And there was a point where I just said, I'm not taking this anymore. And I, I started decreeing God's words over myself. Every time I had any kind of pain, whether it was a headache, whether it was my stomach problems, or whether it was indigestion. And I think the stomach problems and the indigestion were, were linked together. And I just started doing this over and over again. And for the longest time, I've had to have the, you know, the, the, there weren't tums, but they were like called, um, oh, it was a different type of, no, not roll it's uh, Gaviscon. Uh -huh. I would not go anywhere without Gaviscon. And I literally, my husband and I, we would go to Costco and buy the big thing, and then you get the little one to go with it. And so I had them stocked up. So that I would never run out, <laughs> and I would like it would wake me up in the middle of the night. I have, you know, that has reflux, and I'm telling you right now, I have bottles of that in my cupboard. I haven't touched in months, and I give God all the praise. Praise I give God. Him all the glory. Praise God. Because yes, if anybody needs any, <laughs> I think it's probably expired now. Uh -huh. But I've got about four bottles sitting up there in my cupboard that I'm never going to use again. Amen. So. Like you burn the mortgage. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Burn like you burn well, it's the always good to hear that uh, you know God is still moving. Yeah. He doesn't change or anything. Praise God. Um, in Philippians chapter four, it says these awesome words. So, verse fifteen. It says that now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even at Thessalonica you sent once and again unto my necessity. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire, now notice this, fruit may abound to your account. Just meditating on that uh, earlier today. As there's a couple things there that's just worth, worth looking at. One is that you have an account. Do you under, 
understand that? Heaven says you have an account. Hallelujah. You have an account. Okay. And, and it says that uh, uh, he desires that fruit, fruit, would be in that account. Mm. Apparently that's going to be helpful. And then it says that, it, that that fruit might abound. Now that word abound means super abound. So God's desire <clears throat> is through your giving and my giving that fruit would abound to our account and that we would super abound. Now, I know that we talk about the fruit of the Spirit and it well may, well may mean that too. But there may be some other kinds of fruit, okay? The fruit of prosperity. God's desire is, is for us to prosper. Amen. God says you, there's an account. There's an account on each one of us. You go to the book of uh, Malachi chapter 3, and you, it talks about the books that are written. Not, not a book, but books that are written. And, uh, and there it was, it was said to them that they said, he said, uh, you, you have spoken against me. They said, when have we spoken against you? says, when you said it didn't work, you said tithing and giving didn't work, you, 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 your words were stout against me, and the books were opened, and that's a, so there's accounts that God has, and so uh, there's fruit that will grow when we give, okay? and so uh, we have an opportunity, uh, God gives us an opportunity to grow our fruit again tonight, amen? So, God's desire is for you to superbound. Say superbound. Super God's desire. That's what God wants. It's for you to superbound. If we don't do anything, we don't put anything in, there's nothing to abound or to superabound. And your account stays empty in heaven. But in heaven, you know, all these things, we're going to understand it one day fully. Okay, we're going to fully understand it. We're going to be so glad that, you know, man, I'm so glad I was faithful with my tithes and offerings and giving and just loving on the Lord. Amen? Amen. All right. Well, let's say something good about the Lord. Say this with me, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. You said your word. Said your I have a heavenly account with you. Heavenly account with you. And you're watching over them. You're watching over them. And Paul said, Paul said that when I give, when I, give I, have fruit. I have fruit. And you want me, you want me. To abound, to abound and to a super abound. To super abound. It comes through my giving, it comes from my, giving. my tithes and offerings. My tithes and offerings. And so my account, so my account is, growing, is growing, and I am abounding in fruit. Abounding in fruit. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. All Amen. right, let's go ahead. So nice to have everybody here tonight. I did ask uh, Pastor Kathy if she would uh, minister tonight. I asked her last night. I wanted to make certain that she was done work. I didn't want to ask her if she... She was working, and I know she, well, I'm sure she is working still, but uh, she has retired from, uh, uh, how long did you work there? 27 years. 27 years? Wow. Long time. That's a long time. <laughs> uh, to smell a Novocaine and things like that. <laughs> okay. All that dental floss and everything. Good stone on the job. But anyway, uh, so she has retired, and I was kind of just waiting because I knew that it was coming really soon, and so I, I wanted her to... So I checked with her last night. I said, are you retired? She said, yeah. I said, good. I want you to speak tonight. Okay? Yeah. And uh, she gives her a little more time to concentrate and think about things. Amen. So let's, uh, let's go ahead. Let's, let's uh, come on up here, Pastor Kathy. Let's give her a standing ovation. Yeah. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> How I would plan my retirement, but you know what? God has different plans, and yes, we have sir. to go with what what God wants. Even though sometimes I kick all the way along, but mm -hmm. it's um, I retired on Monday. It was all done, and um, my son has had me baking sticky buns and muffins um, <laughs> to take to people since then. <laughs> so um, I think I'll be busy enough. There's lots to do on the farm. But um, I, I just, God's been good to me. And uh, I've probably told it before, but um, I never had to look for a job. Uh, from the time that I started working, um, I went into business college, and there I was assigned a place to go work. And before I was 
done there, and I only worked there for a little while. They kept me after my work term. Um, somebody else called me and asked me to go to work there, and so it's it's been uh, that's been the way it's been the whole my whole time of working, and so God's been good to yeah. me, and uh, I every job there was increase and yeah. increase, and uh, so it's uh, if I get a bit sleepy tonight, it's not been. Uh, it's been a few days of, even though I know it's God's plan, mm -hmm. it's still, I've worked with those people, some of those people for 26 years. Wow. And uh, some of them sent me some nice messages and it, it took a while to reply to them. But in all of it, God deserves the praise. It, it's all yeah. about him. And those people knew that I loved the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I had a, even messages that came through on the dental, Doug Town Dental um, people that I got to talk to over there, like they were a lot of them were Christian people, some of them not, but we I always um, it was a small office and you could talk back and forth and like they were there and I was here sort of thing and you could share and you could share there was people that I shared things about the Lord and um, and I believe that there were seeds are planted even if they're a Christian. You can help each other. Yeah. You can encourage. There was a, a gentleman who lost his wife suddenly, and uh, he, he it's been well over a year, and he really struggled with it. But the last time he was in, he, he was a Christian man, told me that he had moved on, and he had um, had a new relationship started. And so just a lot of things, a lot of good things. And um, sometimes it wasn't always great people like to tell you what they thought of the dentist and what they thought of treatment and whatnot. Uh, people that would call us up on the phone and get a little nasty, but people are scared of the dentist. And so they don't, that's not their favorite place to go. And uh, sometimes people that work there have to take have to take the brunt of it. So, But there's new seasons and, and God has provided for probably the last a year ago if I had if I had been told what was gonna transpire over the last few months since well we put our house up for sale in June. We had our son had approached us and Robert and I prayed about it. We sought the Lord about it. He wanted us to go and sell our house, move down to the farm, help them. Um, he has he doesn't know it per se but um, there is a ministry down there. He uh, he has uh, he's an ex-veteran. His wife is uh, out of the military as well. And there's a lot of military people that they have contact with. People that have a lot of problems. And from what I can tell from the military, a lot of them have problems, whether they were overseas or whether they're not. And um, so they have a lot of military people that come there. He uh, he does. Um, ministry to them. Um, November uh, Remembrance Day, they um, had a Remembrance Day service out there. They had ex veterans that came, people that were still in the military came out there. We had a service. And there was a lady that is in training. She was a, a Baptist lady that is uh, training to be, she's in the military, but she's training to be uh, a minister there. And she came out and we had, Robert and I had a chance to share with her. I knew by the way she prayed, when she prayed this, the, the prayer after the service, that she knew, she knew the Lord. So we had an opportunity to talk to her. So she is in contact out there. There's a lot going on. And, and uh, so we really believe God had, had placed us to go out there. Has it been easy? Has it been straightforward? Has everything fallen into place? No, it hasn't. And, Sometimes I always thought, you know, God, when, and I've heard people say, you know, if, it, if you're in God's will, it'll just fall right into place. Well, that doesn't always happen. Or, and I found that, in, and I struggle with that because things didn't fall into place for us. Um, if anything, it's been just um, everything. Um, mm -hmm. The other night, what was it I told you that the only thing that fell into place in the midst of all of this, my mom took sick and was in the hospital. And um, so when I told her I was retiring, because I had been staying there for three nights a week, 
and she had got used to the fact that I was there, but it was getting to the point that it was just too much. It was so, anyway, the night I told her that I was retiring, and I was retiring on March, um, actually it was supposed to be the 8th, she said, well, nobody's been staying with me after you leave here. Like, and we had arranged for people to stay with her the other night. So that was an answer for me because I didn't know how I was going to not go and stay with her. I was doing it three nights and we had other people doing it. So that was, I said to Rob, that's the only thing right now that has fallen into place. But um, it's, as we move along and, uh, and I know that we're in the will of God, um, I was doing, when Pastor asked me to, to speak class, and I thought, I can't speak because I don't, I haven't really had a lot of time. But then it struck me, you know what, I'm just going to share about what's going on in my life. Yeah. And um, so God doesn't want us to stay in the same place that we are our whole lives through. He has different seasons for us, and in each season, there is a promotion for us. And we have to look at that. He doesn't want us year after year staying where we were. Um, even if we're maturing, there's always <coughs> progression. There's always moving forward. Nothing is going back with God. It's always going forward. And um, we, working with the Lord and getting our lives in alignment with what he has for us is the key. Um, and to develop strong faith in what's to come. And you know, I've had it pretty easy um, my whole life. I was raised in a Christian home. We were protected. I never, I was not somebody that went out and, and did drugs, did alcohol, did any of that stuff. And so life has not been hard for me. Um, we, were, we were not rich by any means, but everything God always looked after my mom never worked. She was in the home. My father worked. But God provided. And, and um, even though they were, we were Baptists, they, don't, they didn't know everything about a full gospel, but God still looked after us and provided for us. So um, I, I never had to re really what I can say that's happened to me in the last few months, trust and believe for things to happen, right? Things sort of just fell into place, but I, was I going anywhere? Was I developing? I might have been maturing some in my spiritual walk, but progression to go to places that you have to trust and you have to have faith for what God has for you. And so that has been um, something that I've looked at that's been happening in the last few months. So. Um, I got looking in the Bible, and there were many people who, in their progressions, had problems, right? They, they went, we had Abraham, and we know Abraham, for many years, didn't have the promise, right? The promise, and when he was old, that promise, the son, came, and look at Joseph. What, Joseph, you know, God had great things for Joseph, and... Um, he, uh, how many years did it take for Joseph to get to the place where God wanted him to be? Yeah. Um, Caleb and Joshua, what they experienced, and and Job, and David, and Daniel, like there were so many people that things just did not fall into right. place for the way things that we think should just fall into place. And so they all had, but God used that and brought them to places and they were strong in their faith. They were strong in the Lord. And um, anyway, I, so I, I sort of had to look at that and think, okay, Kathy, you're not, you're not out of the will of God. You're, because it's many times. And even now, even yesterday, I'm still, poor Rob, he has, he has listened to me. Um, I mean, I, I am not 65 yet and I don't have an old age pension coming in. And I, and I stop working and I think, you know what? But God will provide. And uh, I know he'll look after us. And uh, he's already, Robert worked, he was down at the farm all summer last year. He worked for a gentleman, God provided, because he just quit one day in May. And, and uh, so 
God has been faithful to us, and, and it's all about God. It's not, none of this is about me. I want to give God the praise and the glory, and he is the one that is to be exalted. Um, even though it's not always easy, but God is always good, and he's been faithful. Um, he knows the path ahead for us. He knows where we are. He's been to those uncharted waters that we don't know about. And he's been there, and he knows all about it. Um, he's all-powerful. He's always with us. He's compassionate. He's loving. He's kind. And when um, this all came about, because my plan was to retire, to work for two more years, and then to retire. And um, after I prayed about it, and I just, it, you just know, I don't, when you get to a retirement age, you just know that the time is right. And people told me that, and I always thought, how are you going to know that the time is right? But I knew it was the right time. And I told the Lord when, because most of my time with the Lord was in the vehicle, driving. I, I would drive from Cambridge Nero sometimes to Goat Town, which would be a two and a half hour drive, and then back to Stanley, and then, so I spent a lot of time over the last 26 years, yeah. even driving on the road. And I spent a lot of time in prayer with the Lord, but it wasn't time that I could just get in the room, get in my prayer closet, and just spend time with God, and just with my eyes closed. I mean, you can't draw with your eyes closed. I do. You're in trouble. So I told the Lord, that was one of my things when I said I was retiring, that I, that is my desire, and that is my prayer that I will be up in the morning. I, I am still a morning person. I am not somebody who sleeps in, but to spend time with the Lord before I begin my day, and to get to know Him, to be in, to that place that um, that we all desire to be in a, that intimate place, into that holy place that we can just enter in, into, and, and even if it's for a few minutes every morning or whatever, um, that is my that is my prayer. That is my desire is to know Him, to be a witness to my son and my daughter-in-law and the people that I come in contact with there, and um, just to get to know Him better. Um, over the years, we have not had a great relationship with our son. So when he approached us, we knew it was not, it was God. It had to be because he has not been in contact a lot with us. A lot of stuff we did not know that he did. And some of the stuff I don't like hearing what he did. But God's working in his heart and in his life. And he, uh, the other day he spoke to me and he said, and back when he was a young child, when we went uh, to Robert's dad's church. Somebody prophesied to him and told him that he would be a, a preacher, that he would be a pastor, I think he told him. So he brought that up to me the other night, and he said, you know, Mom, do you remember that man that told me that I was going to be a pastor? And, uh, and I said, yes. And he said, I laughed in his face. And, but he said, that's what I'm becoming. Now. And I'm not a pastor in a church, Hallelujah. but I'm a wow. pastor to people. And um, he might not have it all right yet, but he knows he is being led by the Spirit of God. He does not really understand that he is, but he is. And God is leading him, and um, there's been a great change in him. And so I know when I hear that stuff that that we are in the right place. Amen. And um, I've prayed many years for my son. I know my son, without God, without us praying for him, would not be alive, would not be alive today. Mm -hmm. And it's God that has kept yeah. him alive. And uh, God has a work, just like he has a work for every one of us to do. And, um, and his work is in a different area, but God is, God is good and I'm, I'm excited to see what's going to happen. Um, I had a few um, scriptures written down that um, I just wanted to go over. Galatians 6, 9, if we can put that up. Just some, some um, about seeds, about us 
going into different areas, like in our lives, that we might be going through turmoil and struggles, but um, it says in that scripture, 6, 9, Galatians, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And how many of us along the way have, have got weary at some time or other, and, and we've wanted to quit, we've said we're quitting, but we went, God is not going to let us quit, God has, is faithful, and we will reap if we faint not. And we can't quit. We have to keep yeah. going because there's nothing to quit for. You have to keep going. So um, that scripture is one that I I know a lot about. Um, Jeremiah 29, 11 is another one. The plans that God has for us. And um, he's got plans for every one of us. And sometimes we don't see them. I, I'm, I have not always seen plans that God has, but um, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. And we all have an expected end, a promising expected end. God has great things in store for these last days, and um, as, we, as we journey together, and as God leads us, it's, it's going to be amazing what's going to happen in the next few months and, and years if God allows it. Um, 2 Corinthians 12, 9 is another one that I, is one of my verses that I, um, and a lot of these we all know, but um, it's just good to be reminded. It said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Mm, praise God. We thank God for his grace. His grace and his compassion, his mercy is, um, if we didn't have that, we wouldn't, where would we be? James 1, 5 to 8 says, if anyone lacks wisdom, and we all need the wisdom of God, um, and like lately, I've had, I've done a lot of praying and seeking the Lord, and um, I need the wisdom of God. We all need the wisdom of God. Mm -hmm. We need to be in the place that God wants for us. And we, and I think Kim posted today, I saw that it's essential that we be where God wants us to be, doing what he wants us to do in these last days, because we don't want to be out of the will of God. We want to be where he has us to be. If any of you lack wisdom, we ask God. And when we ask God, he supplies it. He gives it to us. Then uh, getting wisdom is the most important thing. Proverbs 4, 7. Another scripture. Not gonna be, I'm not going to be real long tonight because I, um, I, I do want to share something afterwards. I, um, the untarget waters that I had talked about, I put that into Google and John Lowen came up. And I have a, a bit of a testimony about him because I was uh, just looking for people that in new seasons and whatnot. But uh, before I go there, I'll, I'll do... Proverbs 4, 7, that says, Wisdom is a principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Yeah. <coughs> so thank the Lord that he gives us wisdom. Yeah. Um, we need ears to hear and eyes to see. God um, gives us that if we ask. Ephesians 3, 20 and 21 is another one that I've found used a lot lately. Um, <clears throat> now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. We don't know what God has planned for us. And he... Uh, 
it is going to be exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. And, and when I think of where um, a year ago we did not have our house up for sale, we were quite content in being where we were, where we had fixed our house up to retire and everything was done in the house. And uh, then we started talking about putting our house up for sale. And, and then it didn't sell for a while, and we thought, okay, well, that, it's not God's will that we, we go down there. So we left it, we gave to, what, September the 1st or so, we gave to that it was to sell, and I guess we went a little bit beyond that, because um, we had three weeks to get out of our house, and we <laughs> it was a bit crazy. Um, our stuff is still all stored. Our house has the first layer of of wall on it. The next ones are on there, but there's been no cement poured in there. And um, so we, I've just left that with the Lord. It's, um, I have a place to live, I have a roof over my head, and God will provide when the time is right for the house to be done. And we, our contractor had, uh, has had some family problems, and it's just, I, I just have given it over to the Lord. Uh, because I was all concerned about it. I was what, wanting to be in the house. I was wanting Robert to be working on it, and, and uh, just it wasn't working out. So I just left that. That has been left, and then I went on to retirement, and that was the next stage. So, But um, what I wanted to share about Don Moen that, um, that I came up with, he was, um, and everybody knows who Don Moen is. Yeah. Anyway, he, um, he began his music journey when he was eight years old. Um, a gentleman, a famous violinist, went to his school and was playing the violin. And uh, he liked what this guy did with the violin. He, said it, he made it talk and he said he went home and he told his parents that he was going to learn how to play the violin. And he said, I didn't realize at that point what music, what part music was going to play in my life. He said he attempted to run from music for, for uh, many years. And uh, he said one morning at three o'clock in the morning, Psalm 43 um, came to him. And if you could put Psalm 43, he said the Lord spoke this to him after he had um, ran for a few years from, from music. And it says, he has put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it in fear and shall trust in the Lord. And he said that was the, the thing. He said that when the Lord woke him up, that was the life-defining thing for him, that he got into praise and worship. Um, in his 20s, he played for a Christian music band but at uh, Oral Roberts University. Um, called The Living Sound. Um, and there was a gentleman by the name of Terry Law that had founded that, that uh, music uh, band. And in 1982, his wife was killed in a vehicle uh, accident. And he said that it really played a part in their whole, that whole band. He said uh, Terry was devastated, and even the band members, and. Um, he said that they found healing through their praise and worship. Um, because I think they played as a band. I don't think he was so much into praise and worship at that time, but he said he, um, they were very evangelistic. He said they played, they played around the world uh, leading people to Christ with their music. And um, so he said um, once when they, they were ministering, um, this gentleman was preaching and he was leading the praise and worship. He said, God walked into that service. And he said, um, there was such a presence in that place. He said, I couldn't even open my eyes. He said, and when he did open his eyes, he said, every person was on their face or on their knees. And he said, a 13-year-old girl in that service that was deaf, both ears were opened up. He said, and nobody prayed for her. Hallelujah. He said, so that season ended. Um, he then went on to Integrity Music that he was there for 20 years. 
and he wrote many, he's written many songs, and um, he said that went on for um, 20 years, and he said, and then in 2007, he said, um, the Lord started dealing with him again to me, and he said, we were happily married, he said, we had five children, three of our children were in university, and he said, they needed him, he said, they were, um, they were, he was paying their way, I expect, and he said, but the whisper from the Lord became so strong, he said, that I knew that if I didn't follow that whisper, and we all have heard that whisper, we've all heard that God speak to us and know that we are to do something, and and he said, if I didn't do what God was telling me, he said, I knew that wasn't going to be good, so he said, uh, we picked up and they moved, and um, he, he was a worship leader and songwriter. I'm, um, I'm not sure, I don't, he, they went to Nashville is where they went to. And he said, and this was the part that spoke to me because I've had some ups and downs. And he said, it wasn't even, it wasn't for him. I mean, Don Moen, who's written songs and he's made, he's written the song, God Will Make a Way When There Seems to Be No Way. Um, there's many that he's written, but that was one. He said there were ups and downs, and he said we struggled to even keep our heads above water, he said. So um, people that are, people like John Mullen um, still struggle, right? And we all struggle. So um, he said he had to believe and he had to trust. He said, um, he went on to say in the spring, story that he wrote that he said I had a large platform I had a sphere of influence that I could I could be and could be to people and he said through song or my song and worship he said it opened up opportunities but he goes into Ghana he goes into different places and he said our the song our songs the music he said but there is there is more too, and he helps people. He he helps people that are struggling. He helps little children that are struggling. He helps, and so that sort of spoke to me too. And uh, so, um, God is good. Yeah. Uh, and um, the there's a land flowing with milk and honey, mm -hmm. and there's a promised land for each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. And um, most of us, and maybe everybody's walking in the promised land, but I know I want to be walking in the promised land that God has for me. I want to be in that place where the milk and honey are flowing so that I can be who God wants me to be. Amen. And I be bold and strong for the Lord. And uh, in these last days, there's many people out there that are hurting, lots of people. And when we come in contact with them, or they come by our way, just to smile, just to do something for them, and, and that's what's happening out at, at the farm that we are, um, and it raises pigs and chickens and stuff, and he gives a lot of stuff away to people as well. There are older people on that road that don't have anything. There's a couple that he takes stuff to a lot. He has given them a car because they had no car. So. You sow, what you sow is what you reap. And even sometimes when we aren't, always don't know what we're doing, like he doesn't think that how he believes, but he is, he is sowing and he will reap what he has sowed. Yeah. And um, God is gonna do great things through him and, and yeah. in that place. And so I know that I'm in the place, I always wanted to be, I, I love this church, and this is my church, but I still wanted to do something out in, in the world for people. And to me, I had reached out to a ministry a while back and said, I can't do what you're doing, but I will cook for you. I will, I will bring you stuff. And I didn't hear back from them. But this way, I know that I am, Nicholas calls me a missionary. Um, <laughs> but that is, that is, I want to be around people, I want to be helping people, and that is my mission field right now. And uh, and we need to be 
outside these walls. We need to be ministering and, and talking yes. to people and helping people. And so um, God has answered my prayer in that aspect, but um, I still am a part of this church, and I still, this is my place that I come to, but I, I have a mission field out there as well. So um, God has been good. He's been very good. And he will take us all through. We're all going through yeah. into yeah. that place of milk and honey. And uh, we, uh, I just pray that I encourage you along the way. If you're struggling, yeah. if you're going through some stuff, keep on, keep on trucking. Yeah. Keep on going. Keep on plodding ahead because God has great things for us. And I believe that. I believe mm. he's going to, the revival and the, that's going to take place. Every one of us will be used for the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And, and um, God bless each and every one of you. Yes. And you as well. Awesome. Excellent. Our testimony is perhaps one of the most powerful things that we have. I think when Paul, wherever Paul went, one of the first things he ever did was he would share his testimony of what God did for him, you know, what, where he was when he started out and how he met the Lord on the Damascus Road. And, and uh, it wasn't easy for Paul. And I was thinking, you know, uh, when Pastor Kathy was talking about, about Joseph and things, you know, sometimes we think, oh, everything just should just fall into place and just be easy and perfect. And uh, it will fall into place when we get to heaven. But down here, uh, we're in for a bumpy ride. Yeah. Like, like I've said many times, I said, uh, Lord, I don't understand, but I trust you. And if you can get to that place, you know, it, it's okay not to understand. He doesn't ask us to understand everything, but he does ask us to trust him. Yes. Yes. And as we trust him, he's going to get us to where we need to be. Okay? Yes. And so... Uh, as I, I've, I don't know about you, but I'd like to figure things out. <laughs> and it doesn't ever, hardly ever work the way I've got it figured out. So I've kind of tried to quit figuring things out and just uh, just kind of go with the, with the flow and spend that time, you know, with the Lord and praying in the Holy Ghost and, and believing Him. And uh, this, the Bible says the steps of a good man, and that includes a woman, the steps of a good person are ordered of the Lord. Yes. And so if you're just going to walk with God, you're going to get to where he wants you to be. Amen? Amen. Yeah. I know Pastor Kathy, was, you know, a long time ago, she was always concerned about what's God's will for me? What's God's will for me? Well, I think she's walked into it now. Yes. Okay? And but see, you know, you, if you don't know, you say, well, I'm, I'm just give up and quit. I don't know what he wants. Well, you can just keep walking with God. And, again, and eventually you, you start walking into it. And I think you're just getting into the very edges of it now. And another year from now, I think we're going to go, wow, yes. wow, 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 wow. Yes. Anyway, well, if you'd like some prayer, Pastor Kathy is here. She'd be glad to pray with you, I'm pretty sure. Uh, we have service for Sunday morning, Sunday night. There's no war room this Friday, is there? There is war room. Yes. We have. I'm going to get it right. <laughs> there is. Uh, I said, last night I said there was war room. I had to write everybody real quick and text them. I, I made a mistake. So there is war room this Friday, 9.30. And so, anyway, God bless. Thank you for coming tonight. Have a safe trip home.